Hey everybody, my name is Lee McCormack. I'm from Lee Likes Bikes. In this video, I want to give you guys all some very simple tips to help you buy a mountain bike that's going to serve as a tool to help you um, ride your best. And honestly, if you follow the path and you learn to ride your best, you're start, going to start to live your best as well. Let's, let's dig on in. The first step, I believe, is just knowing yourself. Like what, what kind of riding do you aspire to? Uh, where do you live? What kind of train do you have? What kind of money do you have? Uh, what sort of an athlete are you? And, and, I, and I, I caution strongly as a, as a professional bike coach to not look at the images you see on the internet of all the people hucking off of cliffs and doing crazy things. Like that's not where we start. Really be realistic and understand too, if you can, why you're riding. Are you riding for fitness? Are you riding for fellowship? So once you have a sense of, of, of what, why you want to ride, then we'll start to look at what, what style of bike to get. I mean, when you go out and look, you're going to find all kinds of options. You have cross-country hardtails, cross-country suspension, down-country suspension, trail hardtails, short-travel trail bikes, mid-travel trail bikes, enduro bikes. Oh, let's not forget uh, dirt jump bikes, uh, slope-style bikes, downhill bikes, recumbents, and on and on and on. There are all these different styles. If you don't have an informed decision, the bike you want is a mid-travel trail bike. By the way, if budget's a real issue, go for a trail hardtail. That'll be the same geometry as like your stump jumper, but a hardtail, it'll cost a little bit less money. And if you live somewhere smooth, that's a great option. Okay, now we're gonna talk sizing. So some of you people in the bike industry, maybe now you hit pause and go get a cup of coffee or something and come back. So here we go. Sizing of the bike is critical. Your body is a set of levers and so is the bike. And, it's, and, and if you're gonna design a system of levers, you'd wanna scale the levers so they work with each other. So the size of the frame is absolutely critical for you to be able to uh, ex express your maximum power for climbing and your maximum range of motion for descending. When the bike doesn't fit correctly, especially if the bike's too big, you mechanically cannot dynamically lock into the bike and handle the bike properly. Over the past, I don't know, five to seven years, mountain bikes have gotten longer and longer and longer and longer. Specifically, it's the reach of the frame. That's the horizontal distance between the bottom bracket and the top of the head tube. The logic is that um, a longer bike is more stable. So there's a marketing message of like saying, well, the farther my front tire's in front of me, the less likely I'm gonna go over the handlebars, hence I want longer bikes. That's been going on. The bike industry is very much about trends. When I started riding in the late 80s, early 90s, the buzzword was agility, agility, agility. Bikes were short, head angles were, were steep, bikes were super agile. The buzzword now is stability. Please do not trust the sizing charts on the bike industry's websites. The standard might have been, let's say you're uh, you know, 5'8 to 5'10, that would be considered a medium. 5'10 to 6'2 would be a large, that sort of thing. Uh, the charts haven't changed over the years for most companies that I've seen. Those haven't changed, but the bicycles themselves have gotten significantly longer. And there are examples where, let's say, a current small frame has a longer reach than an older large. So basically, you could be five foot six on a small, and you'd be riding a frame that fits somebody who's actually six feet tall, and it's never gonna work correctly. So ignore those charts. When you walk into the bike shop, they're looking at the same chart that you saw on the internet. They're gonna advise you, in most cases, to ride a bike that's too big. I'm a professional bike coach. I work with hundreds of people a season. Almost everybody is on a bike that's too long. I wanna be really critical here and really clear. If the bike's too long for you, it's never gonna handle correctly. It's gonna to lead to pain in your shoulders. It's gonna to lead, lead to real issues. When you look at the, at the geometry table for the bike you have lust for, okay, Look at the frame reach. That's the number we care about. There's other stuff going on, but that's the number we care about the most. Take your actual height in centimeters. I'm looking at you men. Actual height. Because I know that people like me who are five foot eight generally report five foot 10. Be honest about your height. Find it in centimeters. And then this is simple. Are you ready? Take that number. For me, it's 173 times 2.4 to 2.5, that's your target frame reach. That gives me a range of roughly 
uh, 415 millimeters to 430 millimeters. That's my sweet spot for frame reach. If you get in that range, you have a fighting chance to have a bike that fits you correctly. So you've done your multiplier. Let's say that number is in the low 400s and maybe even the, the, the high 300s. You're gonna notice that some of the bikes you have lust after, none of the sizes fit you. And I want you to consider this. If you're five foot six and you insist on riding an SB150, just from a mechanical standpoint, from my perspective, it's never gonna fit you correctly. You're never gonna have a dynamic lock with that bicycle, ever. If you want to have the ultimate, fun, joyful, transcendent mountain bike experience that we're all here for, the bike has to fit you correctly. So, if no modern bike that you think is hot fits you, open up your mind. Look at other brands. You might also look at used bikes from, from, from previous eras with more reasonable uh, geometry. So now we've decided what sort of bike we want. The next biggie is how much money do you spend? And you've heard this before, and, and it's true. Like, get the best bike you can afford. Uh, um, the higher end parts, uh, they're more tunable, they last longer, they do feel better, especially as you start to uh, uh, develop a sense for your body and your bike, you start to appreciate the nicer stuff. However, um, mountain biking is expensive. It can be very expensive. So first of all, uh, after you buy your bike, you're gonna spend at least $500 probably just buying necessities like uh, pedals, shoes, helmet, gloves, and basic tools. I often, I also recommend knee and elbow guards for most people. So that's about $500 on top of the cost of the bike. And then, this is the unsung cost. If you ride your bike on a regular basis, it needs maintenance. And suspension's awesome, but it needs, it needs regular uh, rebuilding. And so do your brakes and your drivetrain wears out, etc. So depending on how much you ride, the ownership cost of your bike, if you don't break anything, is $500 to $1,000 a year. And I want, I want to make that clear. As much as I ride, my suspension has to be redone twice a season. And that's uh, over 400 bucks a pop. So don't spend everything on the bike. Make sure you have $500 or so left to, to buy the necessities in terms of equipment and make sure you budget for $500 to $1,000 for just maintenance. And of course, keep a little bit in the stash for when you inevitably hit a rock and break a derailleur or do something like that. Before you buy, know who you're buying your bike from. If you buy a brand new bike from a bike shop, theoretically it's been built correctly. Um, and most bike shops will give you some sort of a maintenance package. That's cool. If you buy a used bike, more and more that's a good idea. Just know who you're buying from. Know the condition of the bike. If you buy a bike from a, a, a person, chances are they haven't serviced the suspension before they sold it to you. So understand that you're gonna get this bike and you might have to put significant money into it to make it run correctly. Again, suspension, brakes, drivetrain, and such, so on. Um, if you can, you know, if you're buying a used bike, try to buy a certified one that has some support behind it. Stoked! You have not the best mountain bike you're ever gonna have, certainly not the last, but your first. Congratulations, welcome. Once you have this bicycle, learn it. Learn yourself, dial it in, learn how to ride it, and stop looking at other bikes. Don't look at other people, love the one we are with. Focus on you, focus on that machine, and start, start your path and have, have fun. Uh, Namaste to you, and uh, we'll see you soon.